This video will show you an overview of how I prep and print multicolored water-based tees on a line platen table. The bulk of your work should always be focused on the screen in the stencil. That's why it's called screen printing, not platen pl printing or something of the like. I have created a registration file I used for all of my screen prints. It's simple. It has a square in each corner and a center line at the top and the bottom of the registration file. The document is 9.5 inches wide by 13.5 inches tall. Your size will be based on your screen dimensions. Leave half an inch margin on each side. You don't want your design going edge to edge on your screen. My finished print sizes are usually 8.5 to 10 inches wide to 10 to 12 inches tall for adult unisex tees. If you need to place a printing box for visual reference, set your guides half an inch on each side so you can size your design appropriately. If you haven't done so already, center your design in the file and print a colored version. You will use the colored version to align each color and screen to the platen. It is the easiest and most consistent way I have been able to get registration on multicolored prints. For each transparency, I have the color code and order of print on the top left corner. This ensures I get the print order correct and the color correct. Let's be honest, when you're in the midst of printing and thinking of a million other things, sometimes the ink color gets lost in your train of thought. I have a print preset saved in Illustrator for transparencies. I print visible layers, placement at center, scaling, tile to full pages, overlap at one inch, width and height at 100. Print each color on a separate transparency in full 100% black. Just a little reminder, print on the matte side of your transparency. This allows the transparency to hold the ink. If you print on the glossy side, it will smear off. You can determine the transparency side by getting the corner wet. If it shows up chalky, this will be the side of the printer you want to print on. I use transparencies from KimberlyUSA.com and an HP OfficeJet 8710 with HP Instant Ink. You could also get any local printer shop to print the transparencies for you. If you want one month of Instant Ink free, use my referral code to sign up, but make sure you have a compatible HP printer for the ink program to work. On my printer, I need to place transparencies print side down. For a little visual reminder, I just wrote that on the outside of my printer. Print and prep each transparency just like you did the color aligned copy. Make sure each one is aligned exactly like the colored copy. You can use a window, white box, or even just lay it on the platen to line it up with clear tape. If your print isn't 100% opaque, feel free to print a second copy and stack or layer them on top. They will need to be 100% aligned or you will get a weird stencil when you burn your design. You can also use a permanent marker to fill in the few spots that didn't get printed correctly. I will mention, if you are going to have a white underbase, like I do in this print, you will want to nest the white 1 80th of an inch to 1 8th of an inch smaller. You can do that in Illustrator by offsetting the path negative 0.125 inches to negative 0.0125 inches, or you can offset the color layers at the same amount but positive. This ensures your registration will cover the base and allows up to 1 8th of an inch of misalignment, you know, because we're all human and this is a learning process. Also keep in mind the screen mesh size. For white underbase, I use a one pin mesh. For the other colors, you can do the same, especially for a long print run. I have found with some of my DIY colors, it's better to use the one pin mesh because it's easier to clog the 220. This video was requested in my comments. Thanks for asking for more information. I'll have part two coming in the next week. In the meantime, get those transparencies printed and check the next clip for more learning opportunities.